Okay, to set this up, I got a, a phone call from the Texas Attorney's General's Office, a fellow named Robert, and it was followed up by an email, and here is his voicemail. This is for John Caleb Leverett. This is the Texas Attorney General's Office. My name is Robert. My phone number is 806-349-4508. That's 806-349-4508. I need to speak with you regarding a child support case. Please call me at 806-349-4508. Okay, and here is the email. $43,472.58. Let's call Robert back. Texas Attorney General's Office. This is Robert. Help me up. Hi, Robert. This is Caleb Leverett. I'm returning your phone call. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? I have been waiting on this phone call for almost five years now. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Let me get your case pulled up again real quick. Give me one second. Hang on one second. Okay. So this is this is my situation, Mr. Leverett. Okay, real quick. Okay. Uh, not that it not that it means much to you, but just so you kind of know where I'm coming from on this. Uh, your case is out of the Midland Odessa area. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not out of that office. We're we're trying to help Midland Odessa with some backlogged cases, and your case was one of the ones that that uh, I ended up picking up. So. What's going on? Well, I won full custody or primary custody on July 21st of 2017 in the 446 District Court. Uh, Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley presided, and we were. I was okay, awarded. Hang, yeah, well, hang, 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 hang. I'm, I'm trying to take notes, and you're going a little too fast. Oh, so July 21st, 2017. Yes. And what was the court? 446. Where's that at? Odessa, Ector County. Okay. Like I said, I'm not from Odessa. So I understand. I'm, I'm not from that area. So. Okay. so in 2017. Okay, the last court order I show was from 2019. So what happened in 29 from 2017 to 2019? Um, Y'all have never, ever, ever updated my file. You have shown me being in arrears and not acknowledge the the judge's orders, signed orders at that, showing that I indeed got primary custody of my then 14-year-old son, Blaine. And I have okay. tried well, and tried okay. and tried. Let, to let, me, let, let, me, let me see if I can find I, – I, I don't want to interrupt you. But no, go ahead. You're okay. I, I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to help both of us work through this. Sure. So let me find this 2017 court order. Okay.
because we want to try want to try to resolve this for all parties involved. So. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I'm right there with you. This has been an albatross around my neck for four and a half years, ever since I've had my son, who's, by the way, now a legal adult. Computers are always the slowest when you need them to be fast. Beg your pardon? Okay. For 20, I said computers are always the slowest when you need them to be fast. Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so... Kind of like a lawyer's, huh? Court order. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for a legal order around July 21st, 1 You all have quite a lengthy legal document history in here. You have no idea. That's where we transferred it. Because I mean, what what I have is the active current order is an order out of 2019. So let me see if I can find this 2017 order. That's strange. I don't remember. We've not. I haven't done anything since 2017 that I that I know of. I mean, it has been five years, but yeah, we'll we'll go over that order here in a second. But let me see if I can find this July twenty seventeen order. Well, if it helps, uh, July twenty first was when we first went to court. I believe it was October the following month that we were in mediation. And then that coming December is when the AG's office stole my bank account. So I don't know how it'll be topped in on your end. The year, what you call a 2019 or that may be what happened in 2017. I really don't know. Okay, let's, let's go back to that. According to my records, this is this is the active current order. This is agreed order in suit to modify parent-child relationship out of 446 Judicial District, Hector County, Texas. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and this may did not appear, but it's agreed to terms. Over it did not appear to the speak to terms. This is in regard to Parker Kelly Leverett, Hayden Neal Leverett, Blaine Caleb Leverett, and Linda Nguyen Leverett. Yes. He sent no person. And this may has exclusive right to designate primary residence. What kinds of parties have entered into a written agreement as contained in this order? What kinds of provisions in George relating to rights and duties? And 
conservatorship. Managing Super shall have falling rights to Hayden Neal Lever and Linda Neal and John Caleb Lever. Other parent joint managing conservator shall have falling rights to play. Okay, so it looks like here they're recognizing that y'all have a kind of a split parenting relationship with. Miss May having certain rights to Hayden and London and John. No, oh, I'm John. I'm Blaine. John Caleb. Okay. I have a son named Blaine okay. Caleb. There's sometimes yeah. some and then, mix up yeah. there. Yeah, and that Blaine, Blaine is kind of separated off on that. So, okay, that's, they're recognizing some, um, this is, they got very long-winded and lengthy on this, but. Okay. So, it looks like in this order, they're recognizing that y'all have, <coughs> let's see. Finds following orders in the best sister child is ordered that Candace May and John Phil Blevett are removed as managing conservators, and Candace May and John Phil Blevett are appointed joint managing conservators in the children. It is ordered that at all times Candace May, as a parent joint managing conservator, shall have following rights as to Hayden and Neil Leverett. I can just barely hear you. I'm just, I'm really kind of talking to myself oh, as I go okay. over this order so I, so, I, so I can try to understand what they've done here. Sure. Uh, it's <clears throat> Candace May is a joint managing conservator, shall have the following rights as to Hayden Neal Leverett and London Leanne Leverett and John Caleb Leverett as a parent joint managing conservator, shall have the following rights as to Blaine Caleb Leverett. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've separated Blaine off. From the other two children, yes, giving y'all certain rights uh, to the separate children. The primary one being the right to designate the primary residence of the child, mm -hmm. being Blaine living okay. with me. Okay, so uh, I mean they've they've recognized that. Yeah, as far as I've known. The last time I ever talked to her or even heard from my lawyer, they y'all did recognize that part. The part that you mm -hmm. don't recognize that was also signed by the judge was all back child support is gone. Child support. It is ordered that John Caleb Leverett is obligated to pay and shall pay to Candace May for the support of London Leanne Leverett child support of $500 per month, with the first payment being due July 1st, 2021, and like payment being due the first day of each month thereafter. Um, it's all standard language. Holdings. Okay, so based on what you're telling me, I'm looking for something that says something about the arrears and. Yes, that's what I've been trying to get a hold of y'all for four and a half, almost five years now. Support has ordered that John Caleb Leverett's child support obligation is retroactively terminated. Yes, that part. It's ordered that 
John Jewett that was child support obligation. So I tried to determine it as a change was considered. Many payments made after said date were recorded to you. The weird just existing prior. What? In order that John Caleb Lover's child support obligation is retroactively determined. I need to get the financial people to look at this because this does not make sense to me. I imagine. I actually do feel sorry for you personally. <laughs> Say what? I actually do feel sorry for you personally. I I know this is oh. nothing to do with you. My beef is with your boss, Ken Paxton. Well, I mean, it's not really even with him. It's, yeah, uh, but the buck stops with him, I mean, does it or does it not? He knows who I am, uh, I promise you. Well... <laughs> it is ordered that okay, so they ret retroactively terminated. Okay, that's retroactively terminated. Okay, so it was terminated. That doesn't mean the years were dealt with. It's further ordered that any payments made after said date will be credited to a religious existing by a teaching Okay, so what I'm reading is this. They terminated prior obligations. Let's see, the case started when? <laughs> we originally got divorced 2007. This is literally dragged on for 15 years, and it's still not fixed. <laughs> Case was opened in 2007. So it's retroactively, okay, so obligation retroactively to include. So we terminated that as of 2017. It's further ordered that any payment made after said day will be credited to what we were just existing. See, they, they didn't do away with the arrears. In this language, in this language, in the court order, I'm not seeing where they canceled the arrears. They terminated the support, which means they stopped the support. They didn't, they didn't do away with the arrears. Read the retroactive part then. Retroactively terminated. Okay, so it was terminated as of June 27th. Child support obligations retroactively terminated. Man, that is some weird language. Yeah, the last time my lawyer even bothered to call me back, that was the hang-up on the way you are I mean, yeah, interpreting... The, 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 the language... The language they put in here is very bizarre from the court orders that I'm familiar with. Okay, well, this is the sticky part. Actually, so I'm. You, you feel, so you feel, 
and I'm just asking this question because I don't know. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. So I don't don't take me wrong. I'm I'm asking a question because I'm. Let me find this part again. Where is it? So, in this prior support obligation, you feel that it was the intention at the time that the child support obligation arrears. And they say child support, well, it doesn't say arrears. It says child support obligation retroactively terminated as 2017. That's where the order of said they would be credited to it. See, that's the thing. It, they're saying retroactively terminated as of in one point, and then it says it is further ordered that any payments made after said date will be credited to a rearage existing prior to. So it's like in one thing, they're, they're, you can kind of read into it that they're saying that there was a, a termination of, but yes. then they're saying that payments made after said date will be credited to those arrears. So that kind of says that arrears still exist. That actually is really bizarre. I don't have my papers in front of me. And back then I had an attorney, which is, again, it's strange that you're even talking to me because I haven't former. Mr. Norris, because I've yes. I sent a message to Mr. Norris and I spoke with Mr. Norris and he said he was busy. So I sent him an email. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When was this? Again. Today. Oh, he was busy again. So this may not even be your fault as, uh, at all. This may be Gavin's fault. I I spoke with him. I called him, and he answered the phone today. And I tried to speak with him, and I was able to speak with him long enough for him to tell me that, in his opinion, he is still the attorney of record for you, and asked me to send him an email. So I sent him an email essentially saying, you know, this is my situation. I'm trying to help the Midland Odessa office with some backlog cases. Uh, this is the person that you say you're still the attorney of record of. This is, you know, the cause number, county, case, blah, 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 information. And I would like to, you know, try to get this resolved. So I, I, I kind of see here where, to me, I'm not, I'm not a financial expert that enters and changes these orders in the, the database, I can see here where the language that was created in this order is very problematic to me reading it because it's saying in one point that, okay, they're, they're retroactively terminating. I, I have never seen an order with a retroact. I've seen where things were forgiven. I've seen where they say, okay, you know, this arrearage is being forgiven by the other party. I've never seen any order in the time I've worked for the Attorney General's office where they retroactively terminate something. And then, but then they turn around and they say, it is further ordered that any payments made after said date will be credited to arrearage existing prior to that date. So that I actually agree with you. That does not make sense to me either. That that is confusing. It's it's in one sense they're saying like, okay, they're retroactively terminating the obligation, but in the next sense they're saying, but any payments made to it will be credited to the arrearages. And And once once the youngest child, once once the youngest child is the only one that's under eighteen. I was mm-hmm. I agreed to pay some sort of money. It wasn't a lot, but whatever that that was going to be, maybe that's what it was. But it's starting to sound to me like my own lawyer dropped the ball on this. Well, I mean, it's 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 extremely, and I I, I would love to take this to one of our financial people. I don't think they're. In, hang on, can you? Do you mind hanging on the line for a few minutes? While I don't mind a bit. Like I said, I can't people? believe you actually called me because every time I used to call, if I had an attorney on record, y'all wouldn't talk to me because I had an attorney. So I've been waiting on well, my attorney, I mean, Gavin Norris, this entire time, and here we are. 
Well, it's like, you know, I, I sent you the message before I saw the attorney flag on there. And then, well, okay, I tried to call the attorney, but the attorney can't talk to me right now. So, and I, I'm beginning to question whether he is actually, I mean, do you actually consider him your attorney of record? Give me one second. Well, I'll see if I, one of our financial people is in the office, okay? Okay. I'll be right back. Thanks. Okay, sir, I'm back. Uh, I've got one of our financial folks here that's going to read over this section. And, yeah, that's that's the case. And this is the language in the court order that we're looking at right now. You there? Yes, sir, I'm here. The last time uh, I spoke to Gavin was about six months ago, seven months ago maybe, and he said if he had something to the effect of if he had to go back to the place in which we did the mediation in Midland County, and I don't remember the attorney's office, who the, the actual mediator, if we had to get the transcript and him involved to get what you know the intent of the language really is or was since there obviously is some confusion he would do that and i've still not heard back from him again which is not your fault at all yeah hey on one second i'm i'm speak with this uh our financial expert here for just okay a hang on one second His idea of what was supposed to have been done at that time was that the obligation was supposed to be terminated and arrears raised at that point. But we got over the language. I'm still here, sir. We're just going over the language inside the, the actual court order, okay? So I understand. Me, okay? I understand. Thank you. Again, thank you for your time. This is actually amazing.
Social Security Bureau. Yeah, that's what I was reading was the full account was the idea of what people were trying to do at the time. But it had to do with the language of the I just want to make sure that she was reading it. Yeah. 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 I was in contact with him earlier today, but he didn't speak to him. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, Mr. Leverett? Mm hmm. Okay. So, um, like I said, we're not in the middle of Modesta office. It, it wasn't our financial people that entered this order. I understand. But I just had I just had one of our financial people look over the language, and she's she's interpreting it the same way that I kind of interpreted it, which is apparently the same way the people in Midland interpreted the language. That uh, let me go back and find it again. So. In her, in her looking at the court order information in our database, it shows that your child support obligation was retroactively terminated as of June 1st, 2017. But that next sentence is what is screwing everything up. It is further ordered that any payments after said date will be credited to arrears existing prior to that date. So I'm with you. Sentence, that makes no sense. That sentence is telling us there were arrears because payments made after that date will be credited to those arrears. So the arrears were never taken off the system based on the language in this court order. Okay, from we, this we point. don't have any yeah, we don't have any say in. We have to do what the court order says. I understand that. So that's that's kind of where apparently the sticking point with your situation is, where you know you're you're thinking, and and I understand what you're you're thinking. Okay, well those arrears should have been taken off. Yes, that is what but I was thinking. According to the way this court order is written, that wasn't the case. In the legal terminology they placed in the court order, that didn't happen. So, again, correct me if I'm wrong, is it pointing to assuming I, my thinking is what actually happened, just assuming that if that is, in fact, the mm -hmm. case, then my attorney is the one who or whoever wrote that terminology. I assume the attorneys do that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's the one that made the wording the way it was. He's the one that was too busy to talk to you. He's the one who's been too busy to talk to me. And I'm the only one suffering other than the backlog that the AG's office is having, correct? Yeah. Uh, okay, what do we need to do I mean, to get I'm Gavin on the phone right now? Well, I have no way of doing that. Uh, you just said you talked to him. This is, this is, well, I, I spoke with him. I, he answered the phone earlier. But, I mean, at this point, truly, at this point, um, was Miss May in agreement that those arrears should have been released? 
obviously I can't speak I mean, of what she says or thinks, but that was my understanding well, that that was her understanding. Yeah, because I mean, basically, basically, what's going to have to happen, either through a private action of yours, or possibly I'll have to get somebody higher than me in here, especially since this is an Odessa, a Midland Odessa case. Uh, I'll have to talk to one of our supervisors. I understand. Uh, essentially, there's going to have to be a court action to what's the term they use? Uh, uh, essentially, there's going to have to be another court action to redefine this and clarify this, a clarification. Uh, wow. There's going to have to be a legal court ordered clarification of this. To, wow. To to make to make it come out that that was the intent of both parties that those arrears be zeroed out at that time. It's going to take it's going to take a court action to do that. Uh, it, it's a court action that either you can initiate or I can talk to one of my supervisors and see if. Well, here I'll really make your day. Vacation I'll, action. I'll really make your day. I don't even live in Texas anymore. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's that's fine. I mean, it's. Would I have to go to a Texas of, judge, or do I have to go to a judge where so I reside? Most, most of most of our court actions are actually being done through, done through Zoom conferencing right now because of COVID. Most of the courts that we're dealing with are doing. And I assume the Middle Odessa area is the same way. Almost all of our court actions are being oh, yeah. done through Zoom. Yeah, I, I watch I watch Judge Billingsley like almost religiously. She's always on Zoom. I love her. Yeah. Uh, hang on one second, okay? Let me let me go talk to another person. Just a second, okay? Hang on. Yeah. Thanks. Man, this is getting juicy. Heads are going to roll, and for once, it ain't going to be mine. It's looking like this is falls 90, 100% on Gavin Norris. Lack of communication. Wow. Seems like lack of communication is why most people get divorced in the first place a lot of the times. And now within our own, within my own lawyer. Wow.
40 minute conversation so far. What a crying shame. Gavin did so good getting me, helping me get custody of Blaine, and now this is, this feels like a stab in the back. just get too busy for four and a half years. This feels, uh, maybe I shouldn't say it. No, fuck it, I'll say it. This feels deliberate. Not saying it is, but that's what it feels like. the more reason to stay out of family court resolve all issues if at any way possible amongst yourselves Okay, I'm back. You still there? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, hang on. Okay, so uh, my first question is um, there's two ways we can possibly start this. Okay. The first is Mr. Norris is officially listed on your case as an attorney. So, My attorney? Yeah, in, in, some way, in some ways, you know, I should be talking to him. But because of a, a mess up, I just haven't ended up talking to you, and we'll go from there. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so the first thing is you can, you can go through Mr. Norris and tell him, you know, that if he still represents you, that you want him to take this back to court to be revisited for that language to be clarified in, in a private action. And then once that is settled, you know, you can send us the new court order and we can make whatever changes come out of the new court order that way. Okay. And option two? The option two would be, uh, do you know if Mr. Norris has initiated any type of a court action in this since this court order? I haven't the slightest clue. Every What few okay. calls I ever got back from Gavin were, I'm busy, but I'll, I'll either he would call me back or... Uh, the six month ago conversation, one of his people were going to call me back, and I don't know. What the, I don't know if that means court action or go back to the original uh, place that we did the mediation. Uh, I don't. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So let's see.
So this is kind of where I'm at. I, I'm slightly stuck right now. Uh, you and me both, I, man. I need, I, I need before, before I can, before I can take any action, I need to know for sure that Mr. Norris hasn't initiated something. Understood. How do you I, find that because out? Because I can't, I, I can't initiate action if your attorney has already initiated some type of action. Can you call him and find that so, out? Well, it's I, I can try to. I, I have an email into him. If he returns my email, I don't know. Time will tell. My, my guess is he won't. Be, Given this history of not getting back with me in four and a half years, my guess is he won't get back to you. My suggestion would be this. Uh, you try to reach out to him and decide whether you want him to initiate something to clarify this language. Because this, I mean, I, I'm looking at this language and apparently when this court order, because this wasn't a court order that was created by the attorney general's office from what I see, it was created, you know, by y'all's attorneys. Okay. Uh, when this court order was given to the Midland off the fi Midland financial officers, they interpreted this paragraph the same way in you the did. Way that they put. When I looked at it, I interpreted it in that manner, and. I asked our financial officer, who had nothing to do with the case previously, to look at it, and she interpreted it the same way. Understood. And I see, uh, I see why you interpret it that way. I think I would too. Um, is Attorney Brad Miller on there? And is, and do you have any way of knowing on your end who <clears throat> actually wrote the papers? My attorney Gavin Norris or her attorney Brad Miller? Uh, let me get down to the end of this and see whose names are on here. I doubt that I will have any way to, you know, just looking at this to determine who exactly wrote this up. Because if it's it was the opposing attorney, it. Brad Miller, then none of this would surprise me at all. No. But if Gavin's the one that dropped the ball and continue to drop the ball, that's the part that's actually shocking to me, if not hurtful. There's the, yeah, there's the judge's signature. Judge Billingsley? Just only. Who is Brockett and McNeil? I believe Brockett McNeil is Brad Miller's firm, I think. Don't, don't hold me to that. I, I think that's who that is, but I'm not for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's... There's Brad Miller's name, his sign their signature. The judge signed this copy, and it's got the filed stamp, but their signatures are on this copy that I'm looking at electronically. So both Brad Miller's uh, and Gavin's signatures are on there with the judge, or just Brad's? Well, their their names their names are typed in here, but nobody no, none of their signatures are on here. But right, okay. So their names are typed. Both Brad Miller's name and Gavin Norris's name are both typed on there. Yeah, I mean. It. This says by. Uh, this is only a guess. Be Understood. clear. This is only a guess. I am guessing. Well, no, but it says by. Yeah, no. I mean, there's really no way I can tell who actually wrote this. Right. Uh, I, I know that. I know based on the format that this was not produced by the Attorney General's office. Okay. Um, it was produced either by her attorney or by your attorney. I can't tell you which one. Okay. Well, if you uh, don't know, you looking, don't know. In looking, at this, in looking at this, I have no way of knowing. Okay. Um, but it was produced by one of the private attorneys or the two of them, you know, in consultation. Um, but... Option one would be you contact your attorney and tell them that they need to address this paragraph 
And you say you have a copy of this document somewhere? Somewhere, not on me. I've moved, I don't know how many times since then, but I have it somewhere. Prior support. Uh, the paragraph in question starts on page 13. Uh, do you have pencil and paper? Yes, I'm writing right now. Okay, so this comes out of the Midland Odessa office. Uh, like I said, we're we're trying to kind of help them with the backlog on some of this stuff, but I mean, basically, this is still their case and it's still their courts. Understood. The Midland Odessa office's telephone number is 432-333-1464. 432-333-1464, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And their customer service email is customerservice.odessa.com. 163 at oag.texas.gov. Texas, all spelled out? All spelled out. Okay. Dot G-O-V. Okay. Um, Robert, on your end, again, since wow. he's, I guess, technically on paper, my still my attorney... Whether or not he is, I don't know. On your end, can you make some kind of note that if I do call this Midland number, the 333 number, that they will see that we've talked and I am, like, supposed to or allowed to talk to you? Well, that's what I'm going to try to do next is get you some information that if you want to remove him from your attorney or... If you want to be able to directly talk to us, I'm going to try to get you some waiver forms to sign. And that's why I wanted you to have that Midland Odessa email. Mm -hmm. So if you need to sign these forms, you can email them to the Midland Odessa office and they can upload them to your case file. I, I'm listening. I, this is interesting. On one hand, I don't want to get rid of Gavin because nobody, as far as lawyers goes, knows my case better than he does. But on the other hand, for obvious reasons that we've discussed in this hour-long conversation, I do want to get rid of him. I guess I need to I need to well, do a little more I research, mean, find out the way the pros and cons. I mean, when, I, I've I've had to I've had to help create new court orders for people, and and sometimes when you get into some of these things, the language can get really sticky and really technical. And, and, you know, this may have been an honest attempt to describe what y'all were wanting to do that just didn't quite work. Uh, I've seen people where they try to like do deviations from state standard child support. I've felt that and, on, on and, my end. Yes. And, 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 and I've looked at the language and they're telling me, well, this is what we meant by that deviation language. And I said, well, I mean, I understand what you say you meant, but in reading it, that's not what it says. <laughs> All right. If, if I can keep Gavin and, and, so and let this, him this work, is, work this out on his dime, that's what I want to do yeah. if it'll, in fact, get done. But if I get rid of him and this winds up costing me thousands and thousands and more dollars plus who knows how many more months or years of my life being shut down because of this albatross around my neck. That's what I have to figure out. Yeah. Uh, I have Martin dot. Say it again. Hang on one second. Okay. I, uh, the way our computer database does, if you don't do things right, it, it, jumps when you change screens it oh. jumps to the last time you were on that screen and it jumps to a different case so let's see i need to do okay i have 
prankmycat at gmail.com. Correct. Is that still correct? Yes. Okay. So my suggestion would be first, see if you can talk to Mr. Norris, reference this prior support obligation paragraph. And, you know, as we've talked about it, you know, we've talked about this is what, you know, we talked about what your intention was at the time. Mm -hmm. But in looking at the actual language there, uh, three different people have read this language and are yes. interpreting it differently. Yes, I, 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 see uh, the, I see the problem now. So, if I, you know, if I do fire him and work through, maybe not you, but this other person, whoever you send me to in Midland, and mm -hmm. a judge, you, as it is as you say, we have to have a, a form. Basically, the judge sign off on this. Do does what, that what, person what? have the ability to get in touch with the judge, or is that not something you'll do? Well, what what we would have, what we would do, what we would do would be file a court action, simply taking this back to court, and. I, I wouldn't have the ability to necessarily go back. I don't even know if it would be the same judge, because like I, I don't know the judges or the courts down there. Uh, what we would do would file an action to take this back into court for uh, a review of the child support and the arrears. And... If the two of y'all were in agreement on the arrears, then the judge could probably put that in line. But if for some reason two of y'all are not in agreement on the arrears, it may come up saying that, well, okay, well, you still owe the arrears. You know, well, the I odds of that me... A, that would be up to the judge. You know, the odds of me and my kid's mother actually agreeing on anything is precisely zero. No. In my opinion. So... You know, in, in in that case, it might be better if you have your attorney try to deal with it where they can bring in prior That's court what it records like. or whatever, you know, or prior court notes to to try to clarify and get a clarification. Of, because this isn't something that we did, so we, I can't really follow up. You know, I understand. It's good to know this now. Could, I've just been in the dark for four and a half years, and so my default is if nobody will talk to me, not my own lawyer, not the AG's office, then I just went public with it, and that's what I've done. And I've been bashing your boss ever since. Well, I I don't know about that, and that's not my business. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, but like I said, you know, what what – we would do if we filed a court action would be simply to take it back to court and say, okay, this is where we're at. We want to review current child support and reset the arrears. Okay. Well, I'm going to choose at this moment to stick with my attorney, Gavin. And okay. If for no other reason, not that I trust him anymore, but Judge Billingsley is the only judge in West Texas that bothered to listen to my children. Like, she literally shut down court for almost two hours to actually physically, behind closed doors, unrobed, talk to my own kids. So I'm going to choose to stick with Gavin for the moment. That could change okay. depending on what happens, but I'm going to stick with him for now. Okay. I, I don't know if this Billingsley... Like I said, I'm not in that area. I don't know anything about your courts or judges. You know, I don't know if this judge is still there. Oh, she's definitely still there. I don't know. Yes, she's okay. she's a powerhouse. She's like I said, she's literally the of all the judges I've stood before in the past 15 years, she's the only one that I trust. I, in fact, you can just pass this along in your office. I think all Texas judges ought to emulate how she how she does court. That's, that's it's good to know that there's there, that there are good judges out there. It is because there's so uh, many crooked ones, like the one that threw me in jail, okay. and the one that stole Parker, my son, from me, Judge Whalen and well, Judge well, Rex. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a copy 
of this court order. Okay. So you'll have it to reference. Perfect. Uh, the questionable, the questionable section. Page I thirteen. Believe, started on page thir- at the bottom of page thirteen into page fourteen. Okay. 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 So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna note that we spoke. I'm gonna note that we discussed, you know, this particular paragraph and that you are taking it back to your attorney to work on clarification of that paragraph. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good, man. Robert, you've been a wonderful help. Uh, it's late, but I know that's not your fault uh, personally, but I really appreciate you find somebody finally getting back with me and getting to the bottom of this. Like I said, I've just been in the dark this entire time, but now, yeah. well, now I understand just, the, the, a little bit no, better what's really uh, going on. Uh, I'm, I'm can't say that I'm uh, having worked in various fields of criminal justice and law in various forms and fashion for 35 plus years. Uh, I can't say I'm a big, huge fan of attorneys, but you know, attorneys generally try their best to do the right thing. And, you know, these guys may have been trying their best to do the right thing and do what y'all wanted, but somehow in the translation into written word, it just didn't quite come out right. Yeah. That part Uh, still confuses me. I'm, I've waited this long. I can wait a little bit longer. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I'm going to find out who actually dropped the ball. Because well, so far, that, the only person that, that's ever had to suffer besides my kids during all this is me. The lawyers hadn't suffered. Yeah. None of the judges that threw me in jail, threw, took my kids away, they didn't suffer. Uh, the AG's office hadn't yeah. suffered other than Ken Paxton barely winning re-election in 2018. <laughs> Uh, well, it seems like it seems like the problem you're describing all hinges on these two sentences. Yes, on page thirteen and page fourteen. Gotcha, man, Robert. You've been a, a, a wonderful help. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you for getting back with me. If you'll leave your notes on your end and email me that, I'm going to get in contact with my attorney or someone else at his office or if I can I might even get a hold of the judge herself okay all right sir well I appreciate you calling me back absolutely thank you for your time have a good day you too sir take care bye iPhone has been unpaired All right. I don't even know if this video is ever going to see the light of day, but um, if, in fact, what I just learned is the truth, then my own attorney, Gavin Norris, dropped the ball horribly. And uh, like I just got through telling Mr. Robert there, um, Well, first of all, it's just, this fucking hurts, like bad. I consider Gavin a friend. This hurts. Um, I have to admit that um, I see where the AG's office was coming from. I'm not saying they're completely you know, in the clear here and not at all at fault. I think the overall system that allows this to even happen in the first place is severely fucked up. I still advise people to stay out of the family courts. Um, if for no other reason, this thing, the same thing could happen to you. But yeah, it looks like Gavin is the one that dropped the ball. I can't imagine just for the life of me, can't imagine how you could just simply drop the ball for this long, four and a half years, four years and eight months, how that could possibly happen. It almost seems deliberate. Possibly it was done out of, uh, 
duress, maybe. I don't know why or how that could be, but I, I guess if, if he's been threatened from somebody, I, I mean, I guess it's a possibility. I'm not saying that's what happened, but I guess it's a possibility. I guess we shall see. Um, I'm going to end this now and get my email and read exactly what he was, what Robert was talking about on pages 13 and 14. And we're just going to see how this plays out. I know this. I'm tired of being the one, the only one suffering through this outside of the kids. Like I said, that's what I was going to say. The attorneys haven't suffered any from this that I know of. The court system hasn't suffered from this. The AG's office hasn't suffered from this. I'm the only one that's gone to bed every night for four and a half years. Not having a clue when this will be worked out. My credit is just beyond shot. I'm the one that's having to suffer here. So anyway, we shall see. Maybe this recording will never see the light of day. Maybe it will. We'll just see how see how it goes. All righty. Well, after a lot of consideration, I've decided to release this, obviously, if you're watching it. That was on March 23rd, uh, 2022, so nine days ago. Today is Friday, April the 1st, April Fool's Day. Oh, man. Got the boys on there. Oh, it really is. It just doesn't. April Fool's Day. And this is not an April Fool's joke. I wish it was, but it's not. Coincidentally, today is the eight-year anniversary that yours truly bailed out of family court jail. Eight years ago, uh, after Judge Rex threw me in jail for being a good dad, um, and I would love to be corrected. It'd be funny if I got sued for some of this like from Judge Rex. I didn't throw you in jail for being a good dad. Please, sir, I would love for you to sue me, have papers presented, and tell me exactly what you did throw me in jail for because to this day, even my own attorneys couldn't tell me. Anyways, today is April 1st, so it's been nine days since the conversation you just heard, and uh, I've obviously I've decided to, decided to release this. Um, immediately after getting off the phone with him, I emailed Gavin, and we, there's some back and forth there, and I'm just going to read those emails. But before I even read those emails, again, remember, that was nine days ago, March 23rd, 2022. I responded to Robert yesterday in an email, the AG guy, the one who you just listened to, and this is what I said. I'm going to have to get my old man glasses here. Bear with me. Hi, Robert. I reached out to my attorney immediately as we got off the phone, and he made it clear that he was busy until this past Tuesday, March uh, 28th, 2022, and would not work on resolving my case while off. Then hinted that he would withdraw as my attorney, but didn't say for sure. I've not heard from him since, and I was wondering if he ever got back with you. Let me know so that I can proceed forward. And this is what I got today from Mr. Green, Mr. Robert, uh, 1.33 p.m. today. Why that won't focus, I don't know. Come on. Oh, well, it's there. I may not speak with you regarding your case at this time due to the attorney being assigned to your case, period. Thank you, Robert Green. He may not. That tells me he does not have permission to talk to me. Apparently, he seems to me he would talk to me because he did talk to me. I just record an hour-longer conversation with it. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because it seems to me they call this open court, you know, public records, open court. Anyone can walk in, and yet there's so much stuff that constantly 
people don't want seen. Like, I'm sure Gavin Norris doesn't want this out for him. I could be wrong. He might love it. I don't know. But I'm tired of things being hushed, covered up, shut up, censored, um, and me being the only adult in the situation that has suffered from this. My case has still not been updated. It was supposed to... The only reason we went to mediation to get this resolved, and the only reason the, uh, the, that I've got it in my head that all back child support is gone is because when we went to court, I won in court the right to designate where Blaine lives. I was also awarded child support. I've talked about that I don't know how many times. I suddenly gained something that I never had before. I was awarded to be paid child support. Didn't ask for it. Didn't even want it. I was also awarded, uh, at the time, we were, they were living in San Antonio, and I was in Odessa, you know, meet me halfway. I'd never had that in my life. I always made the complete round trip twice a month for three years. I was awarded something in court, those two things primarily, child support for Blaine, and I was awarded uh, meet halfway. I used those as to my advantage. And my critics are going to say, well, you just used it. You admitted it. Obviously, everybody goes to court, uses evidence to their advantage. That's why it's called evidence. I used it to my advantage because I didn't want, I didn't believe that I owed it, and I won. So now, here we are. Here is my email conversation with my own attorney. And I'm sure this is not couth. I'm sure every attorney out there is probably going, Caleb, you've lost your effing mind. And it's possible I may have. Walk a mile in my shoes and you might understand why I'm doing this. And I don't know what the ramifications are, but the way I see it, before I get to reading this, the way I see it, and I'll just give it to you, I've got nothing else to lose. <laughs> I mean, all I ever wanted was to be involved in my kids' lives when they were little. I wanted them to know who their dad was. Whether or not they grew up to like me or not, that's up to them. I did my best to do what I could to be there. Yes, I stayed drunk for seven years. I've talked about that till I'm blue in the face. I'm not going to go through all that if you care to go look at all that, all my other videos about it, but I've made mistakes. I'm the first to open, be open about all the mistakes I've made, any mistakes I've made. But I don't have anything to lose. I mean, I'm broke. I live in this $3,000. I gave 3000 bucks for this place. It's a cool little place. I like it. Rent's only 350 bucks a month. What are you going to do? Take that? Sue me and take that? <laughs> okay. You get to deal with it then. You either get to put it on the market and wait for it to sell. Coincidentally, the prime season for this type of place is over like today. Everybody's moving out. Uh, so you, you could sue me and get this, and then you'd be stuck with 350 bucks a month. Okay, that's what you want to do? I got a $5,000 Mustang. First Mustang I've ever bought in my life. I didn't, even, I didn't even have a car for like six or eight months. And I got by just fine. I did it on purpose. Uh, I, I guess you could try to sue for my car. I'm what you call a turnip. <laughs> now, I do have some crypto. Now, I'm not going to say how much crypto I've got because, well, that would be foolish. But I've got it in various exchanges. And in some of my crypto, I've got what they call cold wallets. So I guess you could try to put a judgment on my cold wallet. Okay, good luck finding it. And even if you are lucky enough to find my cold wallet, actually I've got two, even if you're lucky enough to find them, good luck getting the seeds, the, the, the password seeds. Best of luck to you. Hell, I don't even know them. I know how to access them, but I don't know exactly. I don't even know what they are. I can't remember them exactly, but I know how. I've got it encrypted so that I know how to access to it. So, you can't take my kids. I mean, what do you do? Take my bank account? Pfft, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> Banks aren't safe. <laughs> I've had my bank account stolen twice. I know better. What do you do? Take my YouTube channel? Okay, I've got Rumble. I've started uploading on Rockfin and Rumble. 
I've got Twitter and I've got Facebook. I hate Facebook, but if I have to, I'll upload it. The, the truth's going to get out. Just know that the truth's going to get out. So, again, I know not pe- everyone's going to... Not everybody's going to agree this is a good idea, but I don't care. You're not the one that, who's had sleepless nights for years now because this isn't resolved. That's me. That's I'm the one. I'm the, there's a reason I'm living in this little thing. Is This is all I can afford. My credit is absolutely shot, like completely obliterated. And it's all because of this mess. And one more thing before I get started. Yes, uh, apparently the... AG is interpreting and reading what was actually written, whether it's by Gavin or Brad Miller. I don't know who wrote it. Maybe they wrote it in concert with each other, like uh, uh, Robert said. I don't know who wrote it. But I uh, lost my train of thought like I usually do, but I'm just going to read this. This is on March 23rd from me to my own attorney, Gavin Norris. Gavin, Robert Green at the Texas AG office called me and said that you couldn't take his call. It has been over four and a half years and my case still hasn't been updated. And after an hour long conversation with him, all signs point to you dropping the ball. I still never heard back from you from your office, back from your office, from our last conversation five or six months ago. If you can get this resolved by this Friday, March 25th, that'd be great. And here's Gavin's response. Fake news. The guy called me today. I told him I had calls all day and to email me so I could speak with him. Also, I didn't drop the ball on anything. It's or He's not the AG that I've been working with on your case. She retired in December. I won't contact him this week. I'm out of the office after 5 p.m. today until Tuesday. Gavin Norris. I've retired. This is me responding back to Gavin. I've retired, too, two years ago since this has been ongoing. It's been four years and eight months. Do you take this long to finish all of your clients' cases? I would legitimately would like to know. How long does this take? Like, I've been waiting four and a half, four years and eight months. I dare say most attorneys graduate from law school faster than that. But that's just me. Okay, Gavin responded. These are all, these are all rapid fire. These all happen within like, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. Caleb, out of respect for our relationship, I'm not going to dignify that with a response. But in light of this conversation, I will officially withdraw from your case. Then you and the AG's office can work this out. Respectfully, Gavin. So I responded. It looks to me like that is what you wanted to do all along. If that is the case, I just wish you would have told me that years ago. Instead, all you've done is tell me over and over that you're working on it. Obviously, you haven't been working on it. If so, so if you are withdrawing from my case and not working on it, then... Nothing has really changed, has it? Now I'm stuck cleaning up your mess. If I'm wrong about any of this, please show me where I'm wrong. Please. Show me where I'm where am I wrong? Four years, eight months. Over two sentences. Page thirteen to fourteen of my own decree. Which coincidentally I got to look and yeah, that was done in twenty seventeen. Uh I got emailed it of a copy of it in January of twenty nineteen, I believe. That was like a full year, 13 months before COVID started. I mean, I know the, all the courts got backed up when COVID started, but 2017, that was way before COVID. And all the courts started didn't start getting backed up until 2020. So anyway, this is Gavin back to me the same day. You're absolutely wrong. One million percent. There was an AG attorney that I work with closely on all cases. She and I had been discussing this, and she was trying to get it resolved before she retired. Unfortunately, she couldn't do it. I've always been straight up with you because that's the relationship we have. I don't want to withdraw from your case as I truly do like and respect you. 
But also, I don't take a lot of BS. And in, instead of going off on you, like I would anyone else, out of respect, if this is the tone and tenure of our conversation, then I'll withdraw. Not a threat, but I just have little understanding for these types of conversations. Well, Gavin, I've always had a lot of respect for you, too. You did outstanding work on getting me Blaine in the court. You, you wiped the floor with uh, Brad Miller. Like, absolutely wiped the floor with him. It's just been four years now. You were straight up with me in court. You have not been straight up with me at all ever since, or else this conversation wouldn't be happening. I feel like you are gaslighting me, which I have loads of experience with, you can't imagine why, after four and a half years of living with this, why I'd be just a little skeptical. I don't want to have to deal with this mess. I wanted it over four and a half years ago. I would have been fine with three and a half years ago. I've asked you repeatedly if you needed more money for me for your time and that I'd gladly pay just to get it finished. You said no every time, so I can't figure out what else you want out of this for me. And that's the last time I've heard from Gavin. Again, that was nine days ago. I, I don't know what else to do. So here's where I'm at. I am fully aware that this is going to ruffle a lot of feathers. I'm fully aware that there's a lot of people that aren't going to like this, but I ain't even got started yet. There may be people who want to sue me over this, possibly the AG's office, Robert himself. I don't wish any ill towards Robert with the AG's office. He was kind enough to talk to me. But now, nine days later, he isn't allowed to talk to me, or may not. I was taught in school that when someone says, I may not, that means they don't have permission to. Maybe he had permission to call me in the first place. I don't know. But there's a reason I record everything. I record everything. Y'all think I post a lot of crap. I don't post nearly everything I've got. Because I've always got an ace up my sleeve. I've learned my lesson. And there could be people who want to sue me out of this. Maybe Gavin. I don't know. Maybe Gavin. I, mean, I really have no idea. But I do know this. I'm not going to be the only one sweating over this any longer. I'm glad the AG's office is backed up and chomping at the bit like, oh, we got to get this off. I mean, it's so bad here in the Permian Basin. We're so backed up. We got to get Amarillo people to start helping out a little bit. I'm glad they're feeling it. I'm glad they're sweating. It's about damn time. I'm glad, I don't know if Gavin's sweating or not, uh, apparently he just doesn't care because he's made it very clear he's not going to work on it over the last nine days. I've not heard from him at all. Any any form of communication, hey, Caleb, I know you're worried about this. It's been you know, four years, eight months, and nine days now. But I, I haven't heard anything, so maybe he doesn't give a crap. But if he does, then I'm glad. I'm glad there, there's going to be some pressure. There's a reason I'm an activist. There's a reason activism works. Because I'm putting the pressure in just the right places on other people. And whoever wants to sue me, go right ahead. I kind of hope you do because there's some people I may sue into this. And when I sue, I'm going to drag everyone into this. Dating back to well before the Parker stuff went viral. People like Dr. Kevin and Christy Porter. My fan base on here probably doesn't know that name, but I promise you people in Odessa, Texas know who he is. He's the orthomacillofacial surgeon there in Odessa, Texas. And believe it or not, he's got a cameo. He appeared in my biggest video, 42 million views and counting. 14-year-old Parker stands up for his right. Yep, he's that scrawny little tall bald-headed dude. And come to find out, <laughs> he actually owns that house, or he did back then. So, Kevin, Dr. Kevin Porter, you will be drugged into this one way or another. 
your wife, Christy Porty. Kissy. Who's on the phone? Kevin and Christy. Christy, you're going to get drug into this one way or another because I'm tired of it. I'm tired of everyone enabling everybody to come and shit on me and me being the only one to be on my side, basically. Yes, I know I've got a lot of support online. That's great. Yes, I know I had 27 people show up for me in court back in July 21st, 2017, of which 23 were all mothers, I might add, for the people who say I'm a misogynist. I've got loads of support, but back then, before all that stuff went viral, I was getting hammered and hammered and hammered and hammered. I was getting beat to a pulp. So if I get my way and I sue whomever, whichever entity, whatever private person or business, if I got to drag the AG into it, which if I can, Ken Paxton in his office. And again, that's another thing I was going to say. I realized that the AG's office was going by what they saw. And I happen to agree with everybody who just like, this doesn't make sense. However, my point is my bank account was stolen within five months of getting Blaine. I had gotten behind before. I've got videos I know where I, I, I talked about writing a check for six or eight thousand dollars right before court just to help. I couldn't pay it all, but I paid what I could. I wasn't that far behind back then, and they stole my freaking bank account. Think about it. If you had a business or any of your any of bank account that you're on, personal or business, and suddenly out of the blue, without warning, it completely got frozen and drained. What would that do to your personal life? What would that do to your company? How safe is your money, really? Something to think about. All the AG has to do is sign a letter. It's all electronic. Tick, tick, tick. Boom. Gone. It's gone. And I, I, I don't remember. I had like five or six, seven thousand bucks in there, something like that. Poof. Gone. As far as I know, it never got credited to my account. As far as I know, my kid's mother never got it. Right before Christmas. So, yeah, I'm going to drag more more people into this. Everybody. There's a person that I, I'd totally forgotten about. Um, Heather Kirk. Blaine's first or second grade teacher at St. John's Episcopal Church there in Odessa, Texas, who testified on the stand against me in a, a, one of the many, many times that I got drugged back in court and sued yet again and again to steal me from my children, got up on the stand and testified something to the effect that, yes, when Blaine gets back to my classroom on Monday mornings after being at his father's house, back then I had him first, third, and fifth weekends and Thursdays, and I took him all to school and picked him up on Thursdays, and they spent the night with me on my weekend. Anyway, back then... I had a lot more time, and I was doing all the legwork. And Heather Kirk got on the stand to try to make me out to be a horrible person, a horrible father, saying Blaine, something like he was a little more hyper after being with me, as if that had any relevance whatsoever. But uh, her husband, Dr. J. Kirk, the chiropractor there, I believe he owns Clark Chiropractic, which is really weird because... Right before I left Odessa and moved to briefly in uh, Conroe, Texas, Willis, Texas, my back was hurting, and I went in there, and I saw Jay. I hadn't seen him since we all went to church back at Crescent Park Baptist Church back in, oh gosh, 1999. Yeah, Parker was just born. We might have had Hayden back then. I hadn't really seen him, and we weren't close or friends, but we knew each other. I knew who he was. He knew I was. Well, I, I saw him when I went in there, and I completely forgot that his wife was the one who testified against me about what about, about Blaine, which is strange because that was 2000, I don't know, 9, 2010, something like that, when she testified well before any of my, my videos went viral. 
and Blaine, as you all know, <laughs> Judge Billingsley later in 2017 gave me custody of Blaine. And so I just would, I'd like to know why Heather, Kirk, teacher, Blaine's old teacher at St. John's Episcopal Church in Odessa, Texas, why you felt the need to get up there and to make me out to be a bad father. I'd really like to know why. So if I get sued or if I start suing people, I'm dragging everyone. And I know the Internet doesn't know who these people are, but the people in Odessa do, the people who sit around and think about how the olden days, oh, I wonder what old crazy Caleb's up to. He's up there ranting and raving. I wonder what he's up to, and they're going to see this. And I'm glad because I'm putting the pressure on everybody. Dr. Kevin Porter and Christy, Heather Kirk. Jay, I never had a problem with him. It's just I remember now when I went into the chiropractor, uh, he gave me a funny look. It wasn't bad or rude or anything. He's never he's a he's a very polite man. Uh, he's not he's not my chiropractor. There was another girl there that was, but it just dawned on me. Yeah, that's the dude whose wife testified against me. And why? I mean, these are all apparently, I'd say they're all Christian people, you know, St. John's Episcopal Church. We all went to church at uh, 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 Crescent Park Baptist Church. This is what Christianity is about? Trying to make it harder on a, a guy, a father? Back then I was a young father. I'm just not young anymore. I'm still a father. <laughs> I got two of my boys in here with me. It's not just Blaine. It's Hayden now. Of course, they're all grown. They're adults. They can live where they want. He needed to change, so he lives with me. And I'm glad. I'm totally fine with continuing shutting my life down, making myself potentially look like an asshole, ruining who knows what kind of relationship just by talking about this, but I'll shut it down. They can move here. I'm glad. I'm glad to have this little tiny place. It's literally like a 30 or 35-foot camper with a Florida room. This is where I'm at is actually the Florida room. I gave 3000 bucks for it. I'm tickled to death. I'm just tickled to death to have this. It's a lot better than having the sailboat. Sailboat, well, that's selling. So <laughs> y'all can't get that either. There's pretty much nothing you can get from me. And just so you know, anyone who reaches out to me in any shape, form, or fashion, A, I'm not suicidal. I'm quite happy. This is This is nice. I'm finally... You know, getting the the pressure on everyone else that's been coming after me, they're going to get the pressure put on them. Just know, anyone, if you contact me, emails, if you have someone uh, serve papers to me like Johnny did back in back in the day when I'm pretty sure I broke some uh, Guinness Book of World Records by being the very first person to go on Facebook Live and actually get served <laughs> family court papers. Whoever that person is, they're going to get recorded. And I'm not going to give them the courtesy I gave Johnny because I simply knew Johnny just from getting sued all the time. But she was a nice person. And I'm not going to be mean to the person. But just know that if y'all are going to stalk me and going to actually find out where my little podunk hut is and have me serve papers yet again, I don't know what you aim to get out of this. I'm literally a turnip. If you get the house, then you're basically just condemning these two boys to live out on the street. Maybe that's what you want. I don't know. But I'll be recording them. And if what Robert Green from the AG's office is saying is true, we wind up going to another court, whether it's Florida or Texas. I have no clue how that works, and it's all going to be on Zoom. Guess what? It's all going to be recorded. It's going to be broadcast. I'm going to broadcast all of it. I'm shining the light just like my beautiful ring light here, my little alien behind me. I'm going to shine the light on all the crap. And again, people are going to, I, I try to anticipate what people are going to criticize me for this time. And I, I, it's sometimes I can do it, sometimes I can't. But I, I don't know what there, there, there is always going to be a group of haters like, why are you doing this? Why can't you just let this go? Why can't you just let this go, Caleb? Just let it go. It's over. Except it's not. It's not over. My critics who ask me, why can't I just let this go? Perhaps you should ask the everyone else involved why they can't let it go. My credit is shot. 
My name is Mud as far as on paper at the AG's office. Why can't they let it go? Why can't my lawyer just get back to me on pages 13 and 14 of my own damn decree and fix that language? Why couldn't that have been done a long time ago? It wouldn't have been that hard. I've offered to pay the money. I don't expect anyone to work for free. Why couldn't that, why can't everyone else let it go? I got sued over and over again. Why couldn't she let it go? <laughs> yeah, she's going to get drug into this too. Oh, yeah, Jason May, stepdad, you're getting drug into it. Oh, yeah, if, if this is how it's going to go down, I'm not going down alone. I'm putting the pressure on everyone else that's coming after me. Everyone else has been living this life of luxury in these big houses, driving these big cars, the AG's office isn't suffering. The family court system as a whole isn't suffering other than, you know, being a pain in Robert's ass. Bless his heart's not his fault. Uh, Gavin's not been suffering. I mean, hell, we've been Facebook friends. I've watched him go to Hawaii, post pictures of that. I've uh, watched him go to Rome. He's posting pictures of that. I mean, wow, I would have loved to have gone to Hawaii and Rome. That would have been nice. Uh, Brad Miller, yeah, he took some hits back in the day. He's, he's, in case y'all are wondering, Brad Miller's the guy in Parker vs. the Man that I got driving off in his, I don't know, BMW or Mercedes or whatever it was. Um, he doesn't give a crap. He's, he, got, he got paid. So he's not suffering. The only person that's suffering is me. And I will say this, one more thing. Out of all the entities involved, the only person who comes out of this with shining colors is Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley herself. Because Judge Billingsley is the only judge that I've ever stood for, and I've stood for a lot of judges. I don't think any of them liked me. She is the only one who shut court down. I mean, it was getting, it was like late when we got out. It was late. It was dark. I'm pretty, if I'm not mistaken, it was dark by, even when she shut court down. She took her robe off right there in the court. We all saw her, her Converse tennis shoes. London fell in love with them. Those are her, those, she wore chucks. When she's up there, she had chucks on. And she said, We're going, I'm going to visit with these babies. You all remember my old hashtag back then? Bring me these babies. Bring me these babies. Quote from Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley. She shot court down and said, I don't care, or she didn't say it directly, but she made it very, very clear. She doesn't care how inconvenient this is for the lawyers or for me or for the opposing side or the nine cops that were sitting on the opposition side since my side was full. <laughs> she didn't care how long it takes. Uh, Shelly, her court reporter, I don't know, she wouldn't talk to Shelly this way, but she didn't care how long she, Shelly would say. She, the bailiff, she didn't care how long it takes. She shut everything down. And for almost two hours, she took my cheerings back to her chambers alone. Just her and just them. Nobody else. No guardian ad litem. No parent. No outside influence. She got to talk to them, and to this day... Obviously, I have no idea what they said, other than what the kids may have told me about five years ago. I don't know what she said. But she shut the court down and listened to my cheerings, which is all I ever wanted. So out of all this mess and all the crap that's happened, Judge Billingsley is the only one that comes out of this shining because she took the time to listen to my kids. And that's exactly why you heard me tell Robert with the AG's office Every judge in the state of Texas, hell, every judge in the, in the union in all 50 states ought to emulate, if we have to have family courts, and I understand the need for courts, I get that part. It's the, 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 the squeezing of the money that is my problem with it. They find the class of people to get. If we must have family courts, then every judge ought to emulate Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley. No matter what happens for here, from here on out, I am forever grateful for what that woman did for me and my family. She saved my family. Hayden at the time chose to live with his mom. London at the time chose to live with their mom. 
I had no problem with that. Never have had a problem with that. Judge Billingsley made sure they got to choose. Blaine, on the other hand, chose to live with me. And so that's what she said he could do. Every judge in the country ought to do that. And I will say this, and I'm pretty sure Judge Billingsley knows this, but uh, there are rumors that Judge Billingsley may have higher political aspirations, and I guess it probably goes without saying, but uh, Judge Billingsley already has my support. Uh, Judge Billingsley already has my, uh, my endorsement. That's the word I was looking for. Judge Billingsley already has my endorsement for, even if it's not political office, whatever she runs for, maybe she goes into business, maybe she needs someone to, maybe who knows whatever. She, if she ever needs anything, she's got my endorsement. And this is coming from an admitted anarchist. I believe, or I have no belief that authority should be a thing. I get it. Everyone else does, or most people do. I ad- I acknowledge that people have elected judges and presidents and governors to be who they are and do what they do and make the decisions and order all the cops to do all the things that they order them to do. I get it. But this is from an admitted anarchist. I just don't have a belief that it should be this way. I endorse Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley, and I hope, man, that might be actually, I hope that doesn't, Judge Billingsley, I hope that doesn't, uh, um, a, a bad, I hope that doesn't do you bad hope not but i am who i am i know i'm weird i know i'm strange i I admit it i know i'm a work in progress i've talked about this till i'm blue in the face i know i've been damaged i know i've got work to do and i'm working on it hell i'm down 20 20 pounds maybe 21 pounds still going to the gym every single day now i didn't go to the gym today because uh i had to go do some stuff with the getting my boat sold but hayden i and I went, and Hayden got to see the old man's pl- uh, place of residence, which is literally on my driver's license, by the way, my boat number. That's my that's where I lived for a year and a half. So I got to spend time with him all day. We got a nice road trip out of it. I took him to the beach. Uh, we got to get his sand, his uh, feet in the sand and wet in the Atlantic o- Ocean for the very first time in his life, and I got some of that recorded on camera. Uh, we went out to the, the jetties. I went to one of my favorite little taco dives, literally called Taco Dive, and got some tacos there. So I didn't go to the gym today, but other than that, I go just about every single day. And I've even starting to get like tone back in my face. Um, I'm just loving this. This is nice. So anyways, uh, yeah, all, all these people that uh, I've mentioned, if, if shit hits the fan and people start suing me and or if I am so inclined or have the ability to uh, sue anybody else this to get the pressure off me and clear my name, I'm dragging all of you in this one way or another. You are going to show your face and what you have did. I'm not going to make anything up because everything I've said, I can back up with 100% facts. Kevin Porter, Dr. Kevin Porter. He was in the Parker movie. That's him. He was there. The reason he was there because that's who she called. Kevin and Christy. That was their house. No one bought me a house for, I don't know, for free. I can't, I'm not going to say, I can't say too much more, but you get the idea. Everyone who has ever caused me and my kids heartache and talk shit, and if something happens from from this, I'm dragging every one of you into it. Everybody's getting subpoenaed. And whoever winds up on in court, if we're doing it on Zoom, guess what? Your face is going to be plastered all over my social media because I've had it. I got divorced 15 years ago because I wanted to be done with the marriage. We filed. We got it. I mean, we both filed. I can't even remember now who's made it for. We both filed. Like, which one made it? Who had actually filed? Who, who, who act was the one that actually initiated it? It's kind of the same pissing contest with Gavin. Okay, Gavin, uh, you said you were. You will withdraw. That you don't want to. It's not a threat. So... 
I tell you what, Gavin, I'll play the game because I've gone this long and <laughs> I can. I've, I'm pretty good at this. I'll go longer. I'm not firing you, Gavin. As of right now, you're not fired. Um, maybe you want me to fire you. Is that the game? Is there a, a legal advantage that you would know as a lawyer that I wouldn't necessarily know because I'm not a lawyer? Um, I'm just leaving it as is. Right as of right now, I cannot talk to Mr. Green uh, in the AG's office. Or I'm back to not being able to talk, even though I already did talk to him. But now I'm back to not being able to talk to him because as of right now, I haven't fired Gavin as my attorney. He's, as far as I know, uh, he is my attorney. Uh, so, Gavin, uh, I would like for you, please, Gavin, please get this done. It's four years and eight months. Uh, COVID's over with, man. You, you can't, no, you can't use that excuse anymore. Yeah, I, 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 there's no more excuses. No more. There's no reason this shouldn't be done and over with. And I guess that's about it. Uh, boys are cooking oatmeal. I hear it. I hear the whistle. The boiling kettle. All right, y'all take care. Paxton for prison. Um, see y'all on the flip side. I'll let you know how this goes. Oh, yeah, and by the way, Welcome to all the newbies. I noticed my channel is suddenly like uh, surging a lot. Welcome. This is my crazy life. <laughs>